In this video, we're going to have a look at the new text slicer visual. We're going to look at the basics of how it works, some of its customization options, and how it differs from the current search option. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. A new visual, the text slicer visual came out as part of the November 2024 update, which gives you users a more streamlined way to filter your data by simply entering a text. To start using it, you need to make sure that your Power BI desktop is in the November 2024 version or later, and you enable this feature under the settings because this is in preview features at the moment. So under the gear icon on the bottom right, go to preview features, and then down here, you need to make sure you select text slicer visual. Once you hit OK, restart your Power BI desktop and you should be able to find this option, the text slicer option. So to start using it is actually pretty intuitive and very simple. So first you select it, which will bring up a text box uh, visual over here. Then we choose a field that we want to add to apply the search to. So for example, we want to maybe apply this on the products, on the product name. Let's just move it at the top here. So to start using it is pretty simple. You go to the text box itself, type the word that you want to search and either hit enter or deselect it. We'll hit enter and it will find you the products with the matching text that you typed. Now that was a pretty simple way to free text type and find the specific text that you're looking for from the products list. However, this feature is not actually new and in fact on the out of the box solution there is something that is fairly similar to this, which is the search option from the slicer uh, visual. So let's look at this table here and I'm going to convert this into the uh, slicer visual over here which is uh, what I typically use uh, is the drop down version of this. So we're going to go under options and drop down where at the moment here you can see you can either choose products here or you can also enable the search function, which gives you the option to type what you want to search for from the search box here when you click the drop down menu. So if we look for a source, for example, you'll be able to get basically the same functionality. However, as you've noticed, it has some kind of key differences in how it works. So first of all, when we typed our search from the search box here, all we need to do was hit enter after we've typed our text. Whereas from the drop down menu here from the original slicer visual, although you type the same way to look for your options, you still have to select what you want to see from, uh, from this list. So you be able to select one or the other or both of them, which in many cases adds more kind of interaction because the users need to have more clicks in order to get the results they want, as opposed to just being able to search by typing the text that they want. Secondly, is that it has a lot of visual features that makes it very obvious on how to use it, such as you know things like the temporary text, which uh, we can be customized, we'll have a look at that in a little bit, or even things like accent bars or clear buttons if you want to retype again. Whereas from the drop down menu, it's not very obvious that there is a search function uh, unless you select down the drop down menu or even just enabling it by having it uh, ticked here from the options. Speaking of which, let's have a look at those customization options available to you in this new text slicer visual. So looking at the format pane here, we have some stuff that we can customize here like the input text, which as I mentioned before, uh, at the moment is showing is filtered by keyword, but uh, you can customize that to whatever text you want to give your users hints on what they can type to search your data using this text slicer. You can adjust things like the fonts, the colors, transparency. You can adjust the dismiss button. So what this is the dismiss button when you type something here, like when you're searching for something. So this X button here 
to change that into, uh, let's say, a different color or maybe a, a bigger icon size. At the bottom here, we have three different boxes for the applied settings. So these are the settings that you adjust when you have a filter applied using the text slicer visual. So what should the color be of the text background if something is applied? What is the text padding? or what is the border if you decide to have a border, just to make it obvious that something is uh, applied using the text slicer visual. I do wish that there are a bit more customization options here when it comes to uh, the, these visual elements, like for example, being able to change the actual icon of the dismiss button or even the placement of it or, or of the other things here like the, the input text or the, the, the clear button. I do like how easy it is to kind of minimize the space that this uh, text slicer takes in your page, especially for those uh, of you who are conscious of kind of minimalistic design and you know maximizing the amount of space that you use for visuals on your pages. This basically perfectly slots into your header parts of your Power BI reports where you know your 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 titles and your logos would normally be. And you know, if we disable the title, because we won't really need the title, especially if you already have the kind of input text already there, uh, it means that you are able to give this option to search for text in this kind of small area of your Power BI dashboards. Under the apply button here, you can adjust and customize this apply button, uh, change its color, or maybe make it bigger or smaller, apply a background to it to make it a little bit more obvious that it's a button, add borders to it, or even move it around by just adding some spacing around it. In the input text box, you can customize a bunch of things like adjusting the background, adjusting the borders, or even adding a focus accent bar, which is basically a colored bar that shows up when you select the text slicer, just to show that you have this focused on at the moment. So it's not very obvious because of the color background, but if I select it, you can see that there is this slight uh, gray bar at the bottom that you can adjust the position of either the top or the bottom. You can adjust the color of it maybe something more obvious like a red for example or even make it a little bit wider so that if we now select it you can see that it's a little bit more obvious that you have this selected so going back to the build pane here under the field well we have product name as our column field which is basically saying that the search text box will be searching this specific column for those keywords that you type in the search box. One limitation that this has is that it can only use one field or one column at a time. So for example, if you wanted to apply your search on multiple columns, uh, let's say on both category name and the product name, you are not able to do that natively here because you can't add multiple columns here in this field well. One way to get around this is by creating a search column, which combines all the columns you, that you want to search on. So for example, in our, in our scenario where we wanted to apply the search on both the category name and the product name, we can simply create a column that has both or combines both of those features so that we can put this in this field well so that the search will be applied to those things. So let's start by going to the order details here, which is basically the lowest level of my cardinality in terms of tables. We're going to create a new, um, a new column here. We're going to call this one search. And uh, I'm going to start by taking the, the category name and this works because there is a relationship between the order details, orders, products, and categories. So we're just using the related function just to get the category name from those, uh, um, from, from those tables. And then we're gonna concatenate it with a space. And then we're gonna do another related here to get the product name like this. And if we just bring it in here as a table, you will see how how that looks like. I'm going to probably just delete this as well. So here it combines the, the categories and the products 
all in kind of one table here in one column. So let's see if we can filter the order details table using the, the search column that we've just created. So what I've done here is I've created the, uh, the text slicer here and added the search column that we've just created. And now let's try to look for any categories or any product names that have, um, let's say C in their keywords. So if we hit enter here, so you see it doesn't just give us seafood where obviously C is. We also have condiments where it's uh, showing us this condiment because it has seasoning here, which is kind of part of the text C. So that is a pretty useful way to um, uh, to get around this one field limit. The same trick that I used in one of the dashboards that I've created in the past, where uh, in the reviews section here, it's not a free text uh, search option, but it is something that reads at both the title and the body of the reviews here, which uh, like for example, if we click battery here, it looks for filters or, or it looks for texts in both the title and the body where they mention something about battery and it basically works uh, the same way. Another feature that I think would be really powerful to add in this text slicer visual is the ability to add multiple word searches. So searches for two separate words, for example, that you can apply all in the one text box like seafood or produce, for example. And I can show you exactly how that could look like because text slicers or filters as a feature is not really a new requirement. And in fact, there are a bunch of alternatives available to you right now from AppSource, which uh, if you're willing to use custom visuals is available for you to use. And this is basically where I typically go if I need to use something more advanced uh, as a text slicer. So to access the app source, you need to make sure that you have signed into your Power BI account, first of all. And then you need to go to get more visuals here from the build pane. From the search box here, we'll just simply type search here, which will give you a bunch of different options that you can start using right now. One of the more basic ones is the text filter, which is um, one by Microsoft and it's been around for you know quite a long time now and is a very simple search box tool that pretty much works exactly the same way as the text slicer visual so you type your text you uh, you can clear the filter here and it's just a simple text box so very very simple another one to note that I have covered in the past is the smart filter by okviz so this one is a, a pretty interesting one that allows you to do so many things like the one that I'm describing before the multiple uh, text searches so you can have multiple um, results as well as cascading categories so if you have drop downs for categories and subcategories you can filter further to those um, you can have them as a drop down or as a search uh, text filter as well like the text slicer so uh, if you want something more advanced uh, I would highly recommend that you check this one out. And that's really it for this video. So if you want to learn more about the text slicer visual and any other details about this new visual, I will leave the LinkedIn blog post in the description box below so you can read about all of the other features uh, and other peculiarities that it might have. Uh, I'll leave it in the description box below for you. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.